Hello and welcome to the Private Sanitary Sewer Replacement Non-PVC Pipe Area YouTube video. If you're watching this, you have received a letter for the Paxton Creek Mini Basin PC3E Claremont Neighborhood Project. We have a public meeting March 2nd, 2023. My name is Bill Weaver. We have a uh, this 30 minute PowerPoint presentation to explain the project. The project team includes yourselves as property owners, the Board of Supervisors and the Authority Board, Brad Gutschall is our Township Manager, Sewer Department staff is listed below, and again, my, my name is Bill Weaver, I'll be providing this presentation. The consulting engineer that's designing the project is HRG, they're the um, selected con uh, engineer contractor for this project. Jason Hines is the group manager. Justin Mendisky is also the group manager and the project engineers are listed below. Why are we here? The recognized infiltration inflow problems. Back in 93, we had overflowing manholes, basement backups. This caused chapter 94 and clean stream violations with the DEP. We also exceeded interceptor capacity limits with our intermunicipal agreements with Harrisburg, Susquehanna, and Swatera. What's causing the, these I, &I problems? Here's an example of system failures. We have a few photos. Offset joints and shear breaks in the sewer main is on the right with the circle, and then the bad transitions to private sewer is on the left. That is a uh, O-ring joint that when they connected your private sewer to the lateral in the street, these O-rings would leak. Here's just another example of what we see in the field. You can see that without proper backfill procedures in the past, there's a whole piece of pipe missing, causing groundwater infiltration into the sewer system. This resulted in a second amendment to the consent decree for Paxton Creek to replace all asbestos cement pipe and clay sanitary sewers that have reached their useful life, including private sewers. Projects were selected and prioritized by drainage area. Sewers in PC3E were metered, showing excessive I9. The, the uh, consent decree requires elimination of overflows and basement backups by 2022 and to reduce the hydraulic overload by 2027. Reducing the flow into the sewer system allows it to properly function without the threat of sewer backups and overflows. This is just a map of the overall project. It includes people that have PVC sewers that are a little newer and also non-PVC sewers, which is the older part of the system. This is the overall map of the uh, entire project. A little bit about the project summary. So it will include 19,759 feet of the old asbestos cement pipe, also 271 private building sewers in, in this area for which the meeting is being held on March 2nd. We're also repairing the PVC main area and there are 138 private sewers in this area which includes portions of the stormwater system that is 9,500 feet. The 138 private sewer project is going, going currently. Other work is listed there. We have, of course, uh, ADA ramps that need to be restored, paving, curbs, sidewalk, etc. The project is estimated to cost $18 million, and this will be updated after the final design is complete in May. Project milestones. We did mail out some storm sewer surveys to help our engineer with designs. We appreciate those who have responded. The design will go until the uh, end of November 23. We'll bid it in November, award the project in December. We'll have a pre-construction meeting in February, and the construction is anticipated to last a year and a half until the end of 2025. Final completion, December 2025. And the storm sewer work for some areas may be completed by our own township replacement crew. 
So the agreements required for this project, uh, right now, as I just mentioned, 138 private sewers are being repaired in the PVC area that's currently under construction. For your area, we have 271 private sewers. The agreement discussion is held at the end of the presentation. At the public meeting, we do that at the end, and I'll explain later how, if you can't make the meeting, you can email us questions. The off-street stormwater drainage uh, easements and sanitary sewer easements will be required and will be mailed out to the affected property owners when the final design is complete by HRG in May. A little bit about the process. First thing we do is for these projects is we conduct this neighborhood meeting. We go over the details of the project, receive the private agreements, perform the house inspections, replace laterals and building sewers, and this will be done by work zone. We'll go over that next. And that's normally done, you'll see it after they do the sewer mains in the street. And then we restore everything that's affected by construction and we go into detail later in this presentation on that. So the milestones for the agreements and the house inspections, we'd like to get all the agreements by May 23, and we'll be doing the house inspections in your area from March to May 23. And again, the private sewer work uh, will then be done by work zone after the sewer mains are replaced. And that again, will be a year and a half and be completed by the end of 2025. So this is just a draft work zone map. This will change uh, after we meet with the contractor, but it could end up with these zones as is. But essentially this is to show that we do do a orderly construction by work zone. So we like to explain to residents a little bit about their typical sewer layout. Most homeowners don't know who owns what part of the sewer system. So the main line is in the street, that's owned by the sewer authority. Everything else from the main in the street is owned by the private property owner, homeowner responsibility. And the technical terminology is just there's a service lateral that's typically in the street, it ends at the sidewalk. Uh, if you don't have sidewalk and curbing, then that normally ends at the edge of paving. And then the building sewer is that term that the plumber puts in uh, when the house is constructed. So there's a building sewer and a service lateral that's part of this project. That's all termed a private sewer. So the house inspection, the important part of this is you can see a diagram of a sump pump. Uh, the sewer system is not designed uh, for sump pump water or groundwater entering that, that the system. This is why we were overloaded, the infiltration and sump pumps. So you can see that this is the proper hookup where you have a uh, weep uh, zone for the pump to pump and then drain into your yard in a pervious area and not tied into the sewer system. So our staff will be checking to make sure that the sump pump is uh, properly discharged into a pervious area and not the sewer. And this is just a diagram. This is typical around the state of Pennsylvania. This is uh, just the engineers use a standard for how you construct a sewer and this is just the spec that's uh, followed by the contractor to replace your sewer system. We like to go over the observation T. This is uh, it's a specialty double sweeping T it's called that's put normally between the sidewalk and the curb where those two connections come together that I went over the lateral and the building sewer and this allows for continuous access to your sewer with either a televising equipment or some kind of saw that would need to cut roots out in the future. With new PVC pipe, we don't anticipate those kind of issues. Uh, your new sewer should last 50 to 100 years without any problems, but this is, if you would run into a problem, how you get into it, hence the name observation T. And it's also a test T that they'll be performing an air test to prove that when we put the pipe in, that it passes an air test and won't leak. And this is what we put on the top. Uh, many municipalities have a plastic cover. We use uh, this, uh, this frame cover that is uh, more sturdy and won't be damaged by uh, mowers and that sort of thing. And it's easier to find. 
it's a casting rather than plastic. So what can you expect during construction on your property? This is a typical building sewer replacement photo that shows how the crew will replace the pipe. More than one area may be needed, we hope not, but that's the importance of the house inspection as well. We need to determine where the sewer comes out of the house. We hope to dig at the house, find the sewer based on our inspection and dig the building sewer in lateral. And this is just a typical picture of when we're finished. You can see that the sidewalk was disturbed. They temporarily have stone down and then the dirt is piled up to allow it to settle a little bit before we come back and do the yard restoration. And this is a typical sidewalk replacement and grass restoration of a property that was properly watered as well. This is our grading and seeding policy that's on the web page. We recommend you read that. It just shows the kind of uh, grass that we use and fertilizer and how you maintain uh, your new yard. And again, this is just an important note that the homeowner must water the lawn once seeded. This again is a photo of a yard that was properly uh, watered. And this is a picture of an actual yard after we were done with the replacement and seeding properly watered. We also like to advise the public that during the building sewer replacement, you still can use your toilets and sinks. However, you should not use heavy use water use machines like wash machines, dishwashers, showers while your building sewer is replaced. Obstructions, of course, over the years, you, you could have obstructions over your sewer. Some of these things may be bushes, flowers, gardens, etc. You may want to preserve these before construction. The township and our construction crew will attempt to notify homeowners if items are needed to be removed prior to doing the work. Trees determined to be obstructions for replacement work will be removed at the township expense. This is due to uh, having to have a subcontractor come out and cut trees down, which requires more uh, planning and, and more time. You will be notified by our staff if you are affected by a tree removal as well. Replacing fences. Any fence that's impacted must be temporarily moved and replaced by you as the homeowner if you want to preserve the con condition. Fences not moved prior to construction will have to be moved and replaced by our crew. And again, if we do the replacement, we can't obviously guarantee it to its original condition. I, I do uh, have to mention that we've done this many times and normally the contractor can take the fence down and, and put it back up without um, damaging it. But we do make sure that we advise the owner that we can't guarantee that. So what, what's the responsibility of the property owner? We do ask that you execute, return the agreement. We schedule a house inspection, remove any obstructions that you wish to preserve and replace after it's complete. The construction crew will attempt again to notify and discuss prior to the work. Notify staff of any underground utilities installed. We could have gas, water, electric for swimming pools, dog fences, water lines for sprinklers, and electric for landscape lighting. And we ask again, water grass after planting is complete. Some other points during construction, it is a very large construction project. So there will be some road conditions during construction. You can see they have to store things in the public right away, piping, manholes, trench boxes. We, we do ask that you follow the safety um, uh, road closures. However, if you live in the neighborhood while the sewer work's going on and the road close sign is up, the contractor will allow you to, uh, for local traffic only, get in and out of your driveway. This is an example of some other um, construction activities you'll see in the road. If we do sewer lining, this is an example where we don't dig. 
in some cases and we put a new liner inside the old pipe itself and this is the workman just inserting that new pipe into the existing pipe and then it's cured and again just to note that the traffic access will be limited or detoured during construction this is an overall project map showing the storm sewer replacement as you may recall in 2019 the township did a study and elected to do a fee and have the authority take over the stormwater system rather than a tax so we could collect fees from the tax exempt folks as well so this project includes stormwater replacements that are funded by the stormwater fee this is an example of the, these types of facilities that will be replaced and again uh, they have reached their useful life and, and th this project will replace these failing infrastructures. This just shows pictures of, on the left, how the pipe has been rotted out and picture on the right, how it's built to new PennDOT standards with plastic pipe. Acquisition of easements off the street will be required. And again, you will receive a letter. The DEP design criteria may revolve these replacements um, to have new easements where we have to relocate some of these sewer easements. You may also have a combined storm and sanitary sewer easement. This is an example of the document. If you are affected, we ask that you don't throw this away. This is what it will look like if you have a drainage easement for storm or sanitary. And with that document, you will also receive a picture showing with the actual easement area. And then upon request, we do understand that there'll be questions so staff and engineer can meet with the affected property owners to discuss the easement and address any concerns or impacts that the easement or relocation may have on your property. Following construction, all easements will be restored to their existing condition at no expense to the property owner. And again, if there are obstructions, will be addressed on a case-by-case -case basis. They could be sheds, fences, etc. Uh, we don't anticipate a hold out of that in this project. Um, but again, if you are affected with this easement, uh, we do welcome you to call so we could come out and explain the project. And this is the information to, to schedule. Uh, John Shear is our in-house engineer, and you can email him or phone John for those easements. For the private sewer replacements, Jim Wetzel is our operations supervisor, and he will coordinate that. And if you would have both agreements, staff can coordinate a combined meeting with our engineer for the complexities to have both agreements. So the benefit to this project is you have a 50-year-old sewer system that's been replaced, including private sewers. You have the storm sewer system that's been replaced and improved, and you have this community asset that's maintained and preserved. One of the better benefits is your neighborhood street receives all new paving. And of course, the environment is protected because we have eliminated the overflows and the basement backups. If you'd like to be notified of project updates we do have a civic ready program for public notifications during construction this just details the notifications that you can receive via email text or call or you can call or visit our web page uh, for these emergency alerts
Residents can stay up to date on projects by visiting our LowerPaxtonAtWork.com and clicking on the Sanitary Sewer Stormwater tab. That's updated by our communications manager and our in-house engineer from time to time as we get project updates. And you can email us at MyNewSewer for any questions you have about the agreement or any questions during construction. An email was monitored by staff during all business hours. Thank you. And again, if you have questions on your private sewer agreement, please email us at my new sewer and we can have your questions answered. Thank you.